We have now discussed work and kinetic energy in previous videos and in class. In this new video, we're going to explore the idea of potential energy, with a focus on the idea of gravitational potential energy in the flat earth approximation that we've been using throughout this course. Let's begin by thinking about the amount of work done by gravity. So let's say we have some ball, and it falls through some height h, and then is dragged across the floor the same distance h. How much work is done by the force of gravity on the ball over this path? So we're looking for the work done by gravity on this path equals what? Now you'll recall from a previous video that work is defined as the force times the displacement times the cosine of the angle in between. For this particular path, I'm going to need to think about it in two pieces. One for the fall and one for the horizontal motion. Because for each of these steps, the theta is different. During the fall, the theta is equal to zero because both the force and the displacement are in the same direction. For the horizontal part of the ball's motion, however, theta is equal to 90 degrees. So we'll just consider the work done by gravity over the falling part and then add the work done by gravity on the horizontal part and just do it in two pieces. For the work done by gravity during the fall, we have the force of gravity times the distance, which is just this quantity h, times cosine of the angle in between, which for this case is zero, zero degrees. And the cosine of zero degrees is one. So the work done by gravity during the fall is the force of gravity times h, and we know that the force of gravity on this ball, if the ball has mass m, is just mg. So we can just say that the work done by the force of gravity during the fall is mgh. Now, let's move on to the horizontal part. On the horizontal part, we have essentially the same thing. The work done by gravity on the horizontal part is the force of gravity times the distance traveled, which is again h, times the cosine of the angle in between, which in this case is 90 degrees. Now the cosine of 90 degrees is zero. So that makes the second calculation fairly straightforward. The work done by gravity on the horizontal part is zero joules, which means that the total work done, which we calculate by adding the two together, is going to be just this work here. So the work done by gravity over this full path is just mgh. Now, let's consider moving the ball to the same final position from the same initial position via a different path. Instead of going straight down and straight over, let's move at a 45 degree angle directly from the initial position to the final position, like so. Let's try and figure out the amount of work done by the force of gravity on this path. So along this path here, which we'll call diagonal, how much work is done by the force of gravity? As before, we start from the definition of work, which is just the force times the distance times the cosine of the angle in between. The force is once again the force of gravity, so we can just write our force as the mass of the ball times g, where the mass of the ball is just m. Now we need to think a little bit more about the distance that the ball is traveling. This forms a right triangle of two legs h. So the distance traveled along this side is going to be equal to the square root of h squared plus h squared, or equivalently, h 
times the square root of 2. So that means that our distance that our ball is traveling is h times the square root of 2. Now we just have to address the cosine of the angle in between. And in this particular problem, the angle in between the force, which is down, and the path, which is on this angle, is 45 degrees. Now, the cosine of 45 degrees is 1 over the square root of 2. If you were to plug it into your calculator, you would see 0 0.707, and those two numbers are equivalent. Now let's put everything together. The work done by gravity along this diagonal path is the force mg, the distance h times the square root of 2, and the cosine of the angle in between, which is 1 over the square root of 2. We can see that the square root of 2 cancels out, and that the work done by gravity on this diagonal path is once again mgh. We get the exact same answer regardless of if the ball goes straight down and straight over, or if the ball follows a diagonal path. The result is the same. The amount of work done by gravity only depends upon the initial height of the ball and the final height of the ball. That's all it depends upon.